Hello, happy Saturday. How's it going? <laughs> I can't believe it's Saturday. Only streaming one other day this week really throws me off timing wise. And I forget what day of the week it is. I woke up this morning, I was like, it feels so weird today. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's Saturday. Do I work today or not? <laughs> so kind of disorienting. Um, I have some of my collapsible bins here. I thought I'd show you. We're making the Elba Textiles Sorrento bucket hat today. I'm kind of excited. I love stuff like this. This is kind of sewing. So we'll get to that in a second. But I sh thought I'd show you some of the bin bins that I'm making. I am working so hard on this pattern. Um, and I have a bunch of them here. So let's see. Let's go through it. So it's going to come with, there's a knife in here. I found it at home. <laughs> It's my office knife. Hi, Melin. How's it going? Happy Saturday. Um, I was just going to show some of the bins that I've been making. Um, if you've seen on Instagram that I'm drafting this pattern, I copied the pattern. I mean, I didn't literally copy it, but I copied the whole idea of those collapsible bins you can get. They're really affordable. They're fabric. Um, they're in like a really cheap fabric, though. And you can only ever get them in these weird solid colors. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I want to say Elizabeth, how's it going? Um, and um, I just wanted nice looking bins. Um, I also wanted to know if I could actually sew this. I, sometimes that's how I get to some of the things I make is I want to know, can I make that? Because um, they use special machinery for some of those things, you know, and you can tell, especially because the stiffener they use is probably, probably like a plastic or something, like actual plastic, and they can sew through that and I can't, so. Anyway, um, I actually successfully on my very first one copied it almost perfectly. So here is one. I mean, my sewing is meh, but you know, um, I wrote down the wrong numbers for my insert on this one, but you can see like it collapses like this. So you just lift up the bin and collapse it. And this one has um, a little window here. So you can put whatever you want in a little handle. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then I've kind of taken this idea a little bit further. So, oh, and I made a clear front one. This one is also collapsible and it's also got, you know, shorter sides and hold it up to me. See, so it's got the clear front. So there'll be an option for that. And this one is also collapsible. And you can see when you do the shorter sides, this doesn't like fit inside of it anymore, the insert. <laughs> um, here is one that is also collapsible, but I wanted to show a border print. So you can see this amazing, wait, where's my camera? Can you see that? Wait, let me show it to you this way. See this border print? Oh, it looks really weird on the camera. It's got these tigers and trees. Hey, Terry, Derek, Judith, Louise, how's it going? Um, and then, I am also making them non-collapsible. So here's a non-collapsible clear front still. And then I've been playing around with all sorts of different like handle options. This one, I just cut a little scoop out and continued my binding. That was a little trickier to do than I thought. It wasn't what I planned, but what I did plan fell apart. Like fell apart, like became a fiasco sewing it. This one, I just used a piece of grow grain ribbon with a piece of binding on it. The original one was that wide webbing. So this one, I actually cut the, the cutout, attached the ribbon, and then I bound it. So it's a little funky, but I really love the structure it adds. And um, this one is not collapsible, so it doesn't have the insert. And this would be like the one that if you're like a little nervous about sewing something like this and you don't need it to be collapsible or you want to cut down on fabric usage, this is the one to do. The non-collapsible, because you don't have to do the insert, you know. And I did a smaller version right here. So these are going to go in my, my knitting cabinet. So I'm making one of each style today. So it'll be collapsible, non-collapsible, clear front collapsible, clear front non-collapsible for options. And I'm making it so that all you do is you figure out what size you want. All you need to know is the across, the side, and the height, and that's it. And then you just plug in the numbers and it will 
magically with a minimal amount of math create the pattern pieces for you. So I'm um, trying to make it as really as easy as possible. I've spent probably 30 hours on this, at least, not including my samples. So um, I really hope you guys do like it because um, I think it's going to be really fun. It's a little more work than you're probably realizing as far as like, oh, wait, I could make, I buy one of these for a few dollars at the store. But if you really want to make your own size in your own fabric, and you want to use some of your fabric, this is, this is going to be really fun. I'm really enjoying it. So they're really fun to sew. They're not that hard. And I'm going to come up with a few options for minimal binding. So that's another thing. If you do like the non-collapsible, so you don't have to bind the insert. And then I think there's going to be a way for us to just seam the top edge without binding it. So there you go. Hello. Welcome from Jamaica. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm in California. Hey Penny, how's it going? Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. I'm really I'm really in loving the process, but I'm not a graphic artist, and so I'm actually weirdly it's the first time I've ever done this. I'm using Canva to make it, and um, that has drawbacks because our internet went, went down yesterday, so I lost like six hours of time to work on it. Hey Patty, how's it going? So, um, but it's the easiest way for me to get things where I want them. I should just do it in InDesign. But, you know, in design so powerful and scary. So anyway, um, the, I'm working like a lot to get these done, the pattern done by this coming week because I'm going to sew them next week with you guys. And so, yeah, so we're going to move fast a little day on the hats today because I'm going to make new samples for my pattern. I decided that I want one of each in the exact same size and the exact same fabric. So it's really obvious to tell the difference because even I get confused and kind of lost in the in the like setup of it. And I'm really, really want it to be something you guys are like, this is going to be, I can do this, you know? <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly, Terry. Yeah, and I think like if you don't think about it, it's no problem. But I'm testing it all and making sure. I found an error a couple days ago that I hadn't noticed. And I was like, oh, wow, I found an error. So it's actually going really well considering I'd only found one layer, little error. So, and, and it was kind of a funny one because I, I mistakenly was looking at it as if the sides in the front were the same size and they're not always. And a lot of mine aren't, so. Oh yeah, exactly, yeah. So you, I was talking about this Rosla um, on Sat, oh, uh, not Saturday. When did I see you guys? Thursday? It was like two days ago. You can enlarge this pattern. If you look at the pattern pieces um, and you see the difference between the sizes, I would increase it by that exact amount, the number of times to get to 25 inches. So I think the, the yeah, so the large comes to 24 inches. So when you look at the pattern pieces and you see the different sizes, just do a line parallel to that last size, the exact same amount, and you'll have your 25 inch hat, so. All right, let's get started. I made myself a cheat sheet, so I kind of, I really want, I'm trying my best to always follow the instructions. I mean, not always, lately. <laughs> lately I try, so that if you're at home and maybe you can't watch the whole video, at least if I'm doing it in the same order, I don't kind of, lead you astray into my own little way of doing things. So I wrote down a little cheat sheet right here of the exact instructions on how to sew it. It's, it's pretty straightforward though. So I have two versions. I have this one here and this one here. And I'm gonna do this one for sure. And then if I have time or I feel like it, I might do this one, but honestly, I wanna get back to doing the um, the bin bin pattern so that I can get that done. Cause I'm a little nervous about getting it done in time for you guys to do it. Where's all my canvas? Is it here? What the heck? I started, I ironed all my interfacing. Okay, so there's that canvas. Oh shoot, let me find my canvas. It's right here, I think, on the table. Right, oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. So 
So I'm using a, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I think the grading is pretty simple on that pattern. And, and since you only need one more inch, um, I would definitely add the inch. I think it'll be fine, you know. There's no tricky grading in this pattern, which is nice, you know. Hats are so funny. Like I've drafted a bunch of hats over my pattern drafting time. And um, it's when you get to use like geometry equations, you know, like C equals pi r squared and stuff like that because you have to find the radius and the diameter and I always feel so smart when I do it but honestly I'm not I, I have to actually I have like a little cheat sheet of all my little equations sitting there so I've memorized them but at the same time if you were to quiz me I don't know you know all right so let's see here's my brim right here here's my top and here's my band so this is the band part that goes right here the brim right here and then the top okay so that's what we're gonna do so first of all oh and I my fabrics here are a Essex uh, linen cotton you can see it's yarn dyed so it's got that kind of speckly kind of texture to it and I used a Liberty of London Tana Lawn print um, which is a very lightweight fabric it's gorgeous um, but I interfaced it because it's super lightweight she recommends using something that's like a mid weight, like a canvas or a denim or a twill, something like that for both layers. And so obviously these are neither of these are that. I'm wondering if the canvas is overkill. So we'll see. I can always take it out if I stop early on, but I don't think it will be. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to attach the canvas to the outer one. So the first step is you're gonna show sew all your short seams. So your band to itself and your brim to itself. Like, you know, right sides together, this kind of thing. I'm not so worried about my canvas lining up, but I am I really want the other one to line up because it's not fused. Oh, I don't know if I have my what kind of what thread color should I use? I'm gonna stick to the cream. I like the idea of the cream contrast on this and then it'll blend in with that. So I haven't even turned on my machine yet. <laughs> the canvas is not overkill. Thank you, Beverly. I appreciate knowing that. I figure since she said that you should use it for both layers, that I should probably not try and be too clever and just trust in that, you know? Oh, the seam allowances are a little bit of a struggle for me. So it's 0.4 inches which is like a little over three eighths of an inch. I am a little uncomfortable with it. <laughs> the seam allowances are 0.4 and, wait, 3.4 and, um, and 0 0.39, 0 0.34 and 0.4 inches you know that those centimeters man this is why I, I had Malin look at my centimeters I still I still w kind of like hope my centimeters are okay when I do my patterns we'll do our best I'm just gonna be consistent yeah okay so I think like yeah exactly Patty it's one centimeter and it's 0.8 centimeters. I've never seen a 0.8 centimeter seam allowance. I've seen one centimeter, but I think I mistakenly thought that was a quarter inch for some reason. I shouldn't have assumed. I'm actually glad I looked this up this time because I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I did not know that. All right, so we have this brim here to this brim here. I think as long as I'm consistent, it'll all be okay. But I did write it down. So are any of you um, making a hat today with me? I know a lot of you have been cutting them out. So we're doing all of our short seams. So I did my brim. Now I'm going to do my band. We're going to basically make two separate hats and we're going to have them in two halves and then put one inside the other. 
Yeah. Exactly, Melinda. I know. They're, they are easy. <laughs> but, you know, decimals are still fractions, you know? But I do know what you mean. I, what I think is the brilliance of of centimeters and decimal is that you can divide by 10, right? Not eighths. Yeah, right? Right, Elizabeth, exactly. You are, Kevin? Nice. You're gonna watch me first, Judith? <laughs> nice, Patty, all right. Um, yeah, I, I've had throat plates that have both. But when I've had those throat plates, I didn't need it then. You know what I mean? So that was kind of a bummer. I'm going to, oh, I clipped that, okay. I just picked any old canvas that I had that I had this weird amount of this one. I'm really glad I saved it now because it ended up working for this pretty good. I forgot one band. Whoops. Let me just stitch that on there. I don't want to get any of these things in between my layers. You know? These little chunks. Oh, did I bring my camera down? I was going to bring my camera back down here. But I had, had to have a little high because of the um, of the uh, bins. They're kind of big for the camera. You don't wear hats, Louise? I don't either. I do when I run. In fact, I've actually, I've worn a hat running and I can't run without it. It's almost like, um, like a psychological thing, you know, like I need that. Oh, okay. Oh, five, six millimeters. Yeah. And see, that's the other thing, Melin, the fact that they did centimeters, not millimeters was interesting. Ooh, nice, Terry. I saw you were making the shirt and the chalk stayed where the buttons and buttonholes. Sorry. That's a bummer. Okay, so the short seams are your bands and brims. And I'm going to press this because I forgot to write that down. So let's go to the iron. Move all my bins out of the way here, too. Just heated up my iron. Let's see if it's still warm. Oh no, it's not. My other hat, I picked a stretch denim only because it was the only like lightweight canvas I had on hand. I think it'll be fiddly. You know. You know, ironing on interfacing, like with, when the, the interfacing touches the iron, that kind of sets my teeth on edge. You guys know what I mean? I need to turn my thing, but it keeps bouncing back. There we go. Okay. A washable walking hat. Yeah, right, Judith? That's so smart. Because I can't wash my running hat. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Razla. That's so funny. I wonder, um, maybe you just hated that hat, you know? Yeah, I think they're from Australia. Yeah, exactly, mostly metric. I thought that the instructions are clear, but the way she words it was really different than the way I would understand it. So I had to do the cheat sheet. That's what makes me nervous about teaching. I feel like I say things 
a little differently than others and that makes me nervous. <laughs> I don't I don't want to try and reinvent anything. You know? This pattern is only $2 too. So if anyone's on the fence, and the $2 goes towards a good cause. Like she used to have it as a free pattern and I actually got it back then. Um, and then when I saw that she decided to make it not free because it was a really popular pattern so she could raise funds, I thought that was a great idea. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it so that, you know, we can kind of support that. And um, I love sewing things like this. I love sewing accessories. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna sew the brims together on with the outer, on the outer perimeter. These are your brim, right? So we're gonna put it right sides together. I'm so tempted to stitch these down, but I won't. I love just stitching things, stitching the heck out of things, you know. All right. Some of these circles can be kind of tricky so make sure you let it know who's boss I kind of want to sew it from this side because sewing on the inner spacing is going to probably make my machine drag a little bit so let's see we're about right here and then I'm going to pin this other juncture right here so that I don't let it slip so definitely make sure when you're sewing things like this, especially circles, that you really pay attention to what's going on. Because look, I'm already getting this little bit of gapping. That is probably because when I ironed on my interfacing to the Liberty, it shrank a little bit. So I'm going to kind of make it do what I want. Um, the lining being a tiny bit smaller is actually probably going to help me later on since it's going to be on the inside of the hat. Because, you know, when you're sewing things that are identical in size, but they're in one inside the other, the one on the inside should be a micro amount smaller, but we don't typically draft a whole another set of patterns for something like this, something so small. But we just deal with it, you know? So. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Yay! Being kind to future self with some beans. Oh, thanks, Rosla. It's nice to hear. <laughs> I sit there and I think about, like, the way I write things down, though. Like, I think about it a lot, you know? Because then I'll read her instructions and I'm like, I would not write it this way. So what what am I doing differently, you know? A broader brand, you said a one-inch strip of denim above the brim. Oh! Hi, Ursula. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. That's, I love that idea. So you mean like, um, right here, Beverly, like you sewed a little, like, like a little trim right here. So it sat on the, I didn't, uh, this is pre-washed. The Liberty is not. <laughs> it's a hat. <laughs> I know I should. She says to pre-wash. Um, let's see what she say. So I got this. Yeah, uh, press and top switch for the rim. All right, so I'm gonna trim this down a tiny bit. I'm just gonna make it kind of a smooth curve, you know, so that when it starts breaking in and um, I see this little cut edge through my hat, it's nice and smooth. Oh my God, I think I'm making it worse though. Who, me? See, like that right there, that juncture. I want that to be a little smoother. Stop it. This is, this is actually looks like a funny seam allowance to me. I'm sure it's really standard too. I love 3 8 inch seams. I actually think that's a really good seam allowance. It's kind of a splits the difference, you know? All right, so I'm just trimming that up a little bit. And um, this is going to go on the inside like this once it's turned 
right? So it's turned and pressed. So I actually think I'm gonna clip this a little bit. It's not gonna be hard for it to do it, but I would really like it to, to the little clips to kind of overlap like that a little bit, you know? Just kind of clip it here. Make sure you do right here all those seam lines. We always tend to like go on the other on either side, but that's where it's thickest, you know. I'm pretty sure she says to do this. I just know, like, say, you know, like when these are folded in here, when they have a when they can do this kind of overlap, rather than create like a little bump. It's kind of a, a little flatter of a bump, you know. Oops. Oh, I just cut through that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I did just cut through that. Wow. I didn't know I'd cut that little spot yet, and I it was so easy. I went right through my stitching. See that? Can you see that? <laughs> it's a little bright, huh? A nice smooth. I'm trying to tune out that second line of stitching right there to see if my my curve is still kind of smooth. All right here. I'll do it on the side so you can see what I'm doing. I'll do it on the side so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. I was just telling someone today how um, she was asking at the fabric store about like camera setups. I said, you know. My advice is don't sweat it too much, you know, like just get going, you know, but um, basically like it's the content of what you're doing is most important. The quality is important, but it's not as important because if you're doing good content, people will support you and then maybe you can kind of up your quality, you know. I said, and I said, you know, like I know my cameras are okay. They're not that great. I really wish this one right here could be really detailed so you could see. So I can make mistakes and my stream can't even tell. Like that one, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell that I did that and I could just pretend like I didn't do it, but I'm such a blurter. I always cop to it, you know? <laughs> Plus we've all done that. We all worry about doing it, right? Just cutting right through our stitching. These scissors are leave a little bit to be desired. Hi, Adina, how's it going? All right, so now I'm going to um, turn this like this and press it, press the perimeter. And then we're gonna do our top stitching around this brim here. So for edges like this, lately I've been um, like pressing it to, like pressing it not open, but opening up my piece and then pressing the seam allowance toward one side. It doesn't really matter what side. It's kind of a tight spot, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to kind of open it up and do it from this edge here. Like that. That way when I turn it on the edge of the brim right here, this seems fussy, it is a little fussy, but I promise you it'll be better to get a nice smooth curve on your brim, you know, which is really, um, you know, it's a really visual spot. Oh, I forgot to turn my chat toward me. Do I know I have, do I have 5,000 subscribers? What? Did that happen? Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I don't get notified when I get subscribers, only comments. That's pretty cool, yay. I just saw that Andrea from So To Fit got 19,000. I'm so happy for her. She says like 1,000 more, she gets like a dedicated person to, she can talk to at YouTube. That is so cool. Goals, right? Where do I find the info? Where do you find, oh. <laughs> I 
They need to fix any problem. I know, I'll try fixing any problem. Where do you find wet info for Louise? My, my subscriber info? It's just on there. If you go to my, um, I just got lost in where I'm at. I've pressed this, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is, here, let me, let me make this look really hard for you guys. Yay, I know, that's really cool. I don't, I haven't been getting, well, maybe it's, maybe it's just been a, been a bit. Usually I get like a, a creator summary from YouTube for the month. And I kind of find that pretty interesting. Because it'll tell me like watch time and stuff like that. <laughs> boop, boop, pet. Thanks for joining us. Boo boo, boo boo pet. Oh my gosh. Some of these names. So right now, I know this is an extra step, I promise. This will, I, cause I find pressing curves to be really challenging. You know, like to get it nice and smooth. This will help. I'm almost done. So I'm just pressing it. It doesn't matter which one you press it to. I think in this case, it might be a little better to press it toward the outer fabric, the one that'll show on the outside. Let's get this a little better right here. So I'm just like, can you see that? I'm just pressing all these little edges toward the brim. And it's kind of fuzzy, just how it looks. Ah, yeah, right, Ray. I know, it's so funny how um, different devices are different, you know? I mean, I guess that's a kind of a weird set sentence, but you know what I mean. Like there's options that are different. Twitch is really bad for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it and I can get rid of some of these wrinkles I just put in my lining. See, look at that, it's nice and smooth, you know? And so it makes pressing it a little easier. I'm gonna do this from the lining side so I can see a little bit of my outer fabric so I know it's not creeping to the right side. Okay. Like this. This is a pretty fast project. So I think it's okay to take the time to sit here and kind of fuss over this kind of stuff. Make it last, enjoy it, you know? Stack up those seams there. I don't like this little bump and it's because of the thickness of the seam right here. So it kind of goes right here. It's so imperceptible. And it's just because the fabric is folding over the thicknesses of the seam allowance. All right. I'm gonna press it one more time from this side. Make sure everything looks okay. Oh, cool, Ursula, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's a really fun project. I think it's something you could really kind of go down a rabbit hole with. All right. Oakley, Oakley. My little brim. <laughs> So um, I'm going to pin this raw edge up here for when I do this top stitching because I have a tendency to let things kind of slip. And they'll want to, I think. So I'm just going to pin this so that it doesn't want to shift up here. Okay. 
And let's see how good my top stitching skills are. Little Barbas. When I did that quilting of that little mini quilt I did recently, I was like, well, good thing um, no one's going to see this. <laughs> Maybe I should go for a rustic vibe. <laughs> I think you should always go from the perimeter toward that as well. Don't go from here to there because you might end up getting something where it'll get slack and then you'll end up with that. Okay. Oh, I didn't know she had another one. All right, so I'm using contrast stitching, so that'll definitely keep me honest, right? I'm gonna edge stitch the perimeter. I'm not even gonna back stitch, so it kind of keeps it uh, the back stitch light right there when I get back there. contrast top stitching all right me too nancy <laughs> right rasla a rustic vibe i was going for a rustic vibe <laughs> the top part yeah i have a feeling ursula that will be the the trickiest part for lots of folks if you don't want it reversible you could do it um you could just sew the top last and serge it on or not serge it but just like sew it on Do this a little bit. Kind of wish I was clever enough to do a spiral so I don't have to stop, you know? I guess I could try. Couldn't I just go, like, what if I, what if I did just come around and then keep going? Right? Yeah, rustic food, like a galette. Why make a pie or a tart when you can make a galette? And people are like, wow. And you're like, oh my God, it's so much easier. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting here. What do you guys think? Like if I have a back stitch there, or maybe what I do is I put, take the stitching to there and I just go around in a spiral. I'm going to do it. I don't want back stitches. You know me, I'm weird about those. I hope I don't run out of bobbin thread. I'm totally paranoid now. I can't remember, I didn't check. I should have checked. Check your bobbin <laughs> before you get to this point. Getting a little lumpy, do you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, the brim feels so good. Now you're hungry. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be lopsided. Okay. Oh! I got a little I got a little rustic right there. <laughs> Circles are getting smaller. starting to become a, a little bit of a problem all these pins are pinned the wrong way you know like I'm right-handed I wish I would pin them that way but I don't so 
I'm just using regular thread, but my thread is a little heavier weight than home sewing thread. It's um, Tex 40, and home sewing thread is usually Tex 27. But yeah, a top stitch thread would be great. Yeah, rustic is now my new word too, Judith. <laughs> All right, why are all these pins pointing at me? I think I can probably get rid of them now. There's no going back now. Oh boy. Ooh, I thought I got a wrinkle. Let's leave the pins in. Did I get her? Oh, I didn't. Wow. I'm kind of pushing this like this because the presser fits pressing, pushing the fabric toward me, right? And so I'm kind of trying to fight it so that I don't get those. Cause you know, you, you can kind of start getting these little angular little, oh, I can't even see them really. Well, yeah, don't jinx me, Elizabeth. Um, You know what, Louise? I find that going slower, I get a little wibbly. You know what I mean? So it is very satisfying. But I do feel like it's decreasing the circumference of my brim. Oh boy, that got a little wide right there. right in there. Ooh, look, it's a little wider over here. I'm going to run out of space. This must be, is this my beginning area? Dang, it's not. That's my beginning area. Okay. Well, hopefully I get into the seam allowance really soon. Right through here. It's a little tight. Eek. All right. Phew. Let's see if I can fix this right here now. So let's, um, so if you guys do the spiral, I would start from your back tack right here. Like when you go do your edge stitch, just keep going like back tack here edge stitch come around go on top of your original and then veer off you know I'm gonna try and sink my needle into the, these stitches here like the exact same I legit thought that's where I was gonna run out of bobbin <laughs> let's check <laughs> hey Helen how's it going I just won. Yay! <laughs> oh man. That was a happy dance for sure. <laughs> Wait, why did I just put that in my drawer? I think I need to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> What am I going to do today now? <laughs> I, this like jumps out of me, the back tack there, but ooh, it feels so good. You know? Look at that. I feel so professional right now. Yay. Okay. Now what? Press and top stitch brim. Brim. That's all. That's what I reduced that instruction. Yeah, Team Ceremony. Team Bobbin. <laughs> wow. Okay, top to tops to bands. Press toward band and top stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna sew these guys here to the band. And let's see, where's my notches? Where's my notch? Okay, if you lose your notches, it looks like I didn't even put them on here. Just um, fold your circle 
your really round, perfectly cut circle. Oh my God, look at this. Did I really cut this this off? Oh my gosh, what is this over here? <laughs> I can't even get it like that, you know? Um, I think, um, do I trim that off? Ooh, let's see how I do this. Like, let's see. This could be shy and that could be a lot. I'm going to trim a little bit of that off right there. It seems to be the one that's a miss. All right, so now I have my centers here. And then you can add, um, oh yeah, make sure you have your notch right here in the middle. And then you have your seams, and those are your four spots. I can't remember, do I like doing, I think I like doing straight to the circle. I think that that's what I find easier. <laughs> I'm not a professional. <laughs> I guess I am. <laughs> it could be an interesting headband without the top part. Oh, you mean like just leave the top of the hat open? That'd be kind of fun. I mean, it'd be nice and cool. Yeah, you know, pre-filled bobbins. You know, the thing is, my machine, um, have I shown you my bobbin winder? I think I can take a picture of it and show it to you on my screen. So... Let me see. So this is the side of my machine, right? So there's my thread cradle. That's a can of air. That's my water glass. That's just a piece of fabric, scissors, mouse, right? But you can see right here. Here's my bobbin right there. And so it goes through a tension disc right here and to the second cone of thread right here. And so this part right here, see this little silver thing? That presses in and then like it's pressed in right now and that engages it. Hey, Nancy, thanks. <laughs> Look at your little graphic, that's so cute. Thank you. Um, so that presses in and engages it to, to wind. So as I'm sewing, it's winding and then when it fills up, it'll pop that open just like it does on your home sewing machine. Yeah, so I'm winding as I sew, so there's not really a reason to have the pre-filled bobbin. It does pre-fill it for me. It means I have to have two bobbins and two cones of thread if I want to always be winding a bobbin. You know what I mean? I have different ones for different things, Louise, but that's the super chat. That's the YouTube super chat thing. You have lots and you, and you wear them up a lot. Oh, yeah, making, yeah, you have locks and you can wear them. Yeah, like you could wear your hat open, exactly. I was thinking, though, if you wanted to make this easier, because there's, there's one trick to this hat, one step that is a little tricky. So right now we're going to put this hat on the top, right, right now, right? We're going to do that, and we're going to do the same on this, right? We're going to put the hat top on that. And then we're going to attach this one to the inside of the hat. And then we're going to prep, put this one, this is gonna be, you know, inside out, right? Because this will be on the inside of our hat like this, right? I'm just gonna walk you through what we're about to do. I think it's nice to understand what's up, what's coming. So this will be attached to our hat like this, right? And then when this one is sewn together, we're gonna press up this edge, put it over this, and then we're gonna to top stitch it down. That'll be pressed and we just top stitch it down. That spot right there, that's gonna be the tricky part. And so I think that's my prize for winning bobbin roulette. That was a good prize. I mean, winning bobbin roulette was pretty fantastic. <laughs> I didn't even know I was playing. Well, I kinda of did. Elizabeth made me nervous. <laughs> so, so I think like one way you could get around this, if you really dread that last step right there, is you could right now, 
sew your band at this stage go like this take your hat band the longer curved outside right and you're gonna line it up here right sides together and same thing here right sides together although you need to do this you need to go like this and put your hat inside make sure your hat is inside this circle because if you go like this you're gonna get stuck you're gonna get stuck and you're gonna have to like pick up and stuff <laughs> it worked out Elizabeth you made it exciting <laughs> yeah it can be Adina it can be reversible but if you do it this way like I'm explaining now it wouldn't be so then if you did this sew the seam right around then you would have a nice clean seam of your hat bands your lining would be in here and then you could just sew your top all as one piece right put all your pieces together and then sew it right sides together turn the in hat inside out and sew it right sides together so this edge would be raw inside of your hat but that would be the way to get around top stitching it, turning it under and top stitching it. And you try it with the other hat maybe, you know. It's an idea. If you really hate that kind of thing, and I know like when I was a beginner, I hated that kind of thing because I really wanted it to turn out nice. And it just felt like everything was on the line. And it's that focal point right there. So I get it. I get it, you know. All right, so we're going to, right now I'm just going to continue how the instructions had you do it. And um, because I don't have a free arm, I'm gonna sew this. Um, actually, I think I want to do this straight edge. Yeah, I think I want to do straight edge to the circle. Meaning, I can do it from this side up with the circle going around, but I think I do better when I have it straight like this. All right, so we're just gonna. Take a couple pins and uh, I'm just going to do the other spots so that they're my non-negotiable points. To make this a little easier, you could clip the perimeter of your band a little bit to open up and spread the seam. My only issue with this is you have to make sure then that you are sewing that clipped edge completely inside of the um, hat and uh, in the seam and that can be a little bit tricky you know what I mean where's my there's my look at that little little tiny notch so that's what I'll start so yeah you can't see the end coming exactly Elizabeth it's like yeah yeah Ray you could totally do that you could bind it I'll never say no to that. All right, so I have my non-negotiable there. And so you can see like this is a little taut, right? But we're gonna we're gonna clip that when we're done sewing it. So just focus on these little quarters, you know, quarter of your hat. It's not that hard then. And don't get any um, wrinkles. If you want to sew a, a basting stitch along this edge, that might be really helpful. Hey Barbara, how's it going? Oh nice. Oh cool, cool, cool. We're having fun. Started without me, huh? Wow. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right. See, it looks like, see like here's my brim. I mean my band and here's my hat top, right? It looks like it won't make it. Just pull it over here line up the seam line and you should have no problems this kind of stuff can be really infuriating but i like to think of it just as a quarter you just have to like look at just a little tiny bit and think of that you only have to line up the seam line you know not the raw edge you have to line up the raw edge but you need to be just stitching on the seam line everything else can be a little funky Last little quarter. I think starting on the lining is a good way to cut your teeth too. All right, 
so there we go. There's my circle. And I would look at your circle, make sure, like there's one tuck right there. And I would also make sure that you don't have any like, maybe like really flat spots. So. <laughs> oh no, that's, well, that'll make you better, right, Helen? I was thinking today while I was ironing this dress, this is the tea house dress, and I, I never made this on camera. This I made this before streaming. And um, I was looking at like all the like, I, you know, I think you guys know I do shortcuts, so I think you would consider me to do shortcuts, right? But I, I used to do even worse ones, right? Not worse, but just like more egregious ones. And this dress, I've shown you this, like this is, this is like a, a lesson and why if you decide, can you see that? To use binding as your hem finish. Look how nice and smooth this binding is. I'm gonna lighten it up for you. This is my little lesson of the day. I'll lighten it up a little bit so you can see it. Okay. Okay, so See how nice and smooth my binding is? So I was sitting there sewing this dress and I was like, ooh, I'm at the very end. I think I'm gonna do binding. And I have this really cute little kitty cat binding. I This is um, means that at the time at Chicken Boots, we were manufacturing the group called Meow. <laughs> and um, this was the binding for it. So it was all pre-cut binding on rolls and like, uh, like this. This is not pre-washed, obviously, right? This is how I get it from the vendor. And because of that, can you see the wrinkles in my dress? My whole hem is like that. So when I tell you guys, to, if you're gonna use binding as a finish, make sure you pre-wash the binding before you attach it. Because this is how my pockets are too, that I did the hems of my pockets as well. And, um, I was thinking today when I was ironing the stress because there's no hope of me really getting those wrinkles out. It's it's impossible because it's actually a different length, right? It's a different length. It's like smaller. And um, I remember thinking, and I was looking at the other sewing of the stress, which I tried to put together quickly. I can tell. I was thinking, you know, I've actually gotten better. You know, I've actually gotten to be a better sewist just in two years. And I feel like I was pretty good to begin with and I'm getting better. And I was trying to think like, what made me better? This all relates to your comment, Helen, of getting orders for bags with binding on it and now it's making you better. And I was trying to think like, well, what made me better? Like, what have I done to get better at sewing? Because I, I want to know. I really want to know, you know? Part of it is being live on camera. <laughs> that has made me better. It, I really sit there and go, is this really what I want to show? Um, at the end of the day, I'll do whatever I want. But at the same time, like, I think it's good to put my best work forward, right? Because then at least I know I did as good as I can. And um, I think that's a kind of a funny side effect that that's what's making me better. Just to, you know, to be, so the pressure of being live, you know? People say to me often, oh, I could never do that live. I'm like, I don't think I could either, but I don't know, you just gotta have the right audience that forgives you for your mistakes, you know? But <laughs> I totally relate to that, Helen. It's like, I had products and people would say, why don't you keep these in stock, like the pumpkin pouch. I'm like, I don't like sewing it. Like literally that was my answer. I don't like sewing it. So. <laughs> the lesson in grain lines. The, what's the camber? I haven't made their patterns yet. How are their patterns? All right, so we're gonna do our next top, right? I just lined it up. Lined up, baby. You could pin all the way around, but I think you'd kind of drive yourself a little crazy doing that. I think just having those four spots gives you a little bit of um, room to manipulate it. Yeah, you need to wash the binding 
before if your if your garment fabric is pre-washed you need to pre-wash the binding that's why it did that because the binding shrunk and the dress didn't so the dress is all wrinkled up because it got it got shrunk it didn't shrink at all that's why it actually just wrinkles up the binding looks great because it's smaller <laughs> but no one's seeing that you know and and if i i probably should just cut it off and you know i can just get some new binding and pre-wash it and do it and when i pre-wash binding um i just put it in a lingerie bag you know i have a lingerie bag for my jog bras and i and it's like a mesh bag you can just make a mesh bag or just a lightweight bag um i just put it in there so that it doesn't get into a big knot with the rest of the stuff in my my laundry and i rarely remember to do it you guys i still make that mistake and i know i'm making it so i'm just showing you what that's what happens if you do that and it's not my only dress like this <laughs> yeah so just pre-wash it I did this whole little photo series of that once and I just never posted it because I was really busy at the time and I was like, oh, I just like, this is not that important. <laughs> I need to focus on what I'm doing. All right, so now we have our two tops of our hat. All right, and so you can see, look at, see how taut that is? That it's curling up. We need to clip that. So let's just clip this. And see, then it starts laying flat. Such a good illustration of why clipping works, you know? Makes sense because this little edge here does not measure the same as this edge. It has to spread out to do that. <laughs> right, Ellen? <laughs> Do you guys remember that movie, um, the Peter Pan movie, Hook, with Robin Williams? I remember thinking that scene was really funny when he goes back to visit the Lost Boys as an adult, and they don't believe it's him, and then one of them goes up to him and smushes his face like that, and he's like, oh, it is him! <laughs> and smooths out all the... He didn't even have wrinkles, but you know what I mean. Made him look like a little kid. It was cute. All right, so we're clipping our edge here. Don't clip anything else, just that edge. You can do it from this side if you want to make sure, but I'm kind of finding it a little easier to do it this side. It's very, very positive, you know what I mean? Can you tell how sharp these scissors are by me doing this? You can see why I'm scared of them, right? But this is the uh, heavier weight side, so I needed a little something with more umph. I don't, I can't do that. These are the handles are too flexible for me to exert a lot of force with these scissors. I'm start, I'm really starting to get into these scissors, though. I've been, I know I talk about them a lot because they're just so different than anything I've used, and I had no idea what I was getting into when I bought them. I just wanted small scissors that would stay sharp for a while. And I was like, what are all the like people really into gadgets into? And that's what I've discovered them. All right. These look so different, don't they? This one looks like it's okay that it's doing that. I don't know why. Oh, I just went right through my thread. This, these, these scissors are too sharp. Too sharp. It didn't even give resistance. It just went right through one stitch right there. I just wanted to trim this though. These layers are so lightweight that I'm actually tr trimming or clipping the top with the band. They're not staying apart like on the heavier weight layers. So. Oh gosh, right, Adina? 
I that's how rotary knives are for me. I'm like, where's this blood coming from? <laughs> or I'll see it on the fabric and same thing. I'm like, what's that red marker on there? You don't even feel it. I, I have to find where I clipped my, you know, nicked myself with the rotary knife because it's a brand new blade. It's dangerous in, in this sewing world. All right. We have our two um, tops. This is how this one's going to be. And then she says to press the seam toward the band and top stitch. Now you can probably press this. I think it'll be really tricky, so I'm just going to top stitch it. So you're pressing this, all the seam allowance towards the band. So just push it and then push it out, pull it apart, and then top stitch it right here to the right of the seam. Yeah, I'm gonna look up that camber. Yeah, are you teaching online or in person, Helen? How are you how are you managing that? Okay. So make sure you keep that seam allowance pressed towards the band. It wants to pretty much stay that way, but when once you clip it. I find that sometimes these little clips will separate and one will go back that way, you know? You know, um, I think it's, is it Barbara? Wait, Barbara or Beverly? Sorry, I always get you too confused. Your, your colors of your names are the same too. Um, one of them's made it. She said, like, doing the heavy weight is a good idea. What's your outer fabric, Mullen? I don't think it'll be weird as long as you're doing all these other things like the top stitching, you know. Oh, nice, Helen. I think uh, Sydney's been making those Piet Pietra pants, right? She was looking for an elastic source. All right. Oh, I got them all. All right. So there's our inside of our hat. This is the one that's going to theoretically show if my hat's not reversible. I'm really pulling it apart. I really want that seam to be nice and smooth. What's this? Oh, it's just a thread. Okay. Making sure that that all stays pressed down. a little bit at a time. It's a little hard to see my on my fabric. I think I could have started that a little bit straighter. All right, so there's my top. Good. Oh, it's tight, but it's not too tight. It's actually good. <laughs> A little preview. <laughs> oh, so your lining is the lighter weight? I thought you said it was the heavier weight. Oh, you're putting interlining only in the brim. No, I think that's fine. Oh, that's cool. I love the Tanya's too. Okay. All right. So now we have our top. I actually, I do need to turn this and then we're going to attach it to the inside of the hat. I'm looking for my seams. They're there. 
Oh, there's a fly in here. That's so rare. Even and my door shut. Um, it's getting a little thick for my little pins I have, so I'll try a clip, but I don't find clips to be as secure. You know? I feel like I can just pop them off if I pull a little too hard. And is there a halfway point here? Oh yeah, there's my little notch. And is there a notch here? I would like one. Let's put the notch. I like having the quarters, you know? So let's see, we're just gonna match these up, these two seams right here. So my this lining seam is like, it's like a fat eighth of an inch to the left of this outer seam right here. So if you're going by the seams of the lining when you're sewing the lining, just be consistent with that. So if you're doing your halfway point, mark your halfway point between the seams of the lining, not the outer. Because you might, get, getting an eighth or a quarter of an inch off might give you a lot of headache. You know what I mean? Getting that mark a little bit off. So I'm just going to ignore my outer seam and go by my inner seam. But I'm marking the the whole thing, so I'll just have to remember that. Or go by the lining. You made shorts. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. So we have our seams. Pretty sure you always match seams to seams as well. Like you don't like put these off of the others. Counter, canner, can't them. What's the word for that? Like I'm not putting these seams at the center of the hat. I'm actually lining all seams up to seams. There's my notch right there. Okay. Those are my three points, and then I'm just going to start at this fourth one right here. Where's the notch? There it is. All right. Lining right sides together. I think in the pattern instructions, she has a few tricks where you will put a stitch line on some of these seams first before you stitch, stitch it down. And then you um, have a guide, you know what I mean? Let's see here. Um, I haven't ironed up the uh, edge yet. It's right here. I'm going to do that in a second, though. That one I actually might stitch as well, you know? So my, my issue with just ironing it up is say you got any of your seam allowances different along the way between your lining and your outer and they're not identical in size. Um, you have to be careful. Like you got to allow yourself a little bit of wiggle room and not just follow the ironed edge, you know. This is a really easy seam. I'm already done. <laughs> All right. So this is like my inside out. Ooh, this is kind of cute this way. It looks legit. You know? I think I could totally wear it this way. This is cute. Yeah, it's, this is cute, okay. Yeah, so you know what I mean, like, um, okay, let's flip it. And let's just, maybe we can put our outer hat. We'll just look at it in some detail. You know, so you're gonna put this, oh, it's not, it's like, I gotta kind of force it on there. I'm just checking, you know? 
Because say your lining and your outer weren't the same exact size, and they aren't, you know? If they're not the same exact size and you just fold this edge up and then top stitch it down, you can end up with like this side being baggy or um, taut and this side having a, like a wrinkle, you know? So there's that danger. But you need to turn it up because, well, you gotta top stitch it down. So we're gonna do it. We're almost done, one more seam. And I've kind of, you know, didn't go too fast, right? So this is a pretty, pretty easy hat, pretty quick. If you pick better fabrics than I did, you wouldn't have all this hoo-ha of interfacing and canvas. And by the way, this, this was the right call. It feels good, like the weight and everything, like when I try it on. And so look at all that extra right there. I probably need to trim that a little bit. I'm gonna trim it now. Because I actually won't be able to once I sew it. I'm just gonna trim this little extra canvas here. I think doing a slight just a very slightly smaller seam allowance is probably smarter because you're gonna have to put this over something else and the bulk of that is gonna take up a little bit of room we're not robots you know so we can't really be as precise as we'd like to be Crisp, we don't lose it. Doesn't really seem like you need to clip that edge, which is nice too. Yeah, a good both sidesing. <laughs> exactly. All right. You could even make it so that the brim was contrast to the outer. You can have a lot of fun with this. All right, so let's just put this on here. You don't really need to smooth all that out in there because it's not gonna actually help you very much. So what you wanna do though is make sure that this, oh, do we need to, no, I'm not gonna, I was gonna top stitch that, top stitch that just now. I don't think you do. Tops to bands. Press toward band and top stitch. Press under outer band edge, 0.39 inches. It's a little bigger. I would do a little smaller. Attach lining top to brim, 0.4 inches, and press up. Top stitch outer top to hat. Yeah, okay, we're here. This is it. Let's do some halfway point marks, though. Yeah, now, let's see. We'll do this one right here. Could even do chalk if you want, you know? <laughs> Maybe a good idea. I'm full of good ideas I don't follow. Oh, there's my notch, I can actually see it on there. That, my notch is perfect, like it's still there. Like that's so heartening. want I just want these big beefy pins right here and am I gonna be sewing this 
Yeah, I don't think I can, I don't think I can pin that like this. I don't think I'm coordinated enough for that. <laughs> So with my spiral stitching, it is a little tricky to see my seam allowance. All right, this is too thick for these pins right here. I'm just gonna do it right before, like right here. Like that. Ooh, there's my back stitch. What, what is that back stitch? Oh, that's when I, okay, that's my seam. I'm like, why? Why is there a back stitch there? Who would do such a thing? Okay. Oh, I just bent my pin. Okay. Some of these are quilting pins and some of these are the ones that were in that dumb cushion. Remember I told you guys about that, that window cushion at our new house that they pinned the fabric to the, the, the cushion by just sticking it straight in, not pinning the fabric along the edge so you could see the pins. They just pushed them in like it was a pin cushion and I kept like really hurting myself on it. So the, some of these are the cheap ones, like these right here I can tell because these are a lighter yellow. <laughs> Picky I know. <laughs> but these are really strong. All right, so I think I have this, I'm ready. I just wanna make sure I actually did the, the seam allowance. So I'm trying to raw, line up these raw edges because it's easy to mistake what my seam is compared to all the brim top stitching I did. All right, let's do it, I'm ready. And yes, I'm only gonna do the four. <laughs> I like having flexibility while I sew. All right, moment of truth, people. Buckle up. All right, so I'm gonna kinda keep this a little bit flat. And I'm gonna check that my raw edge is still kinda lined up to that raw edge. And then I'm also, this is what my other hand's doing, I'm pulling this lining away from the seam. It's actually not hard. It wants to line up pretty easily. Oh, you guys, this is actually really easy. That could be it, Nancy. Um, I think that's where I sewed the um, lining to the hat, though. This is actually really easy. I thought this would be harder. It's not. Checking my bobbin. Pull the lining, arrange it, line up those raw edges down go to the next one. Oh, see this is a cheap one they even use cheap pins the nerve I understand being desperate to get things done when your house is on the market but then you go and you take those pins out <laughs> We take the cushion with you. You don't leave it there. One of them actually poked my vein in my front of my ankle and it left the craziest bruise for weeks. Okay, that's it, I'm done. That was pretty easy. I saw one of my back stitches somewhere. Where is it? Is it on this, the top of the lining? I saw my back stitch somewhere, like my little thread ends. Oh, okay. Is it there? No. 
This was really pleasurable. A little tight, but I think it's gonna break in, you know? Yeah, I think you're right, Ray. Yes, for Senor and I. I recovered the cushion. <laughs> um, yeah, if you did like matching thread, there'd be a lot less pressure to um, make it so that you, you got it spot on. And if you don't want things like, I whine about back stitches all the time, but you guys, you know, I could be smart about it and what I could do is leave long tails, thread the tail with a needle, pull it to the inside and hand tie it. I made the, um, the small, the 22 inches, cause that's my head height, head, head circumference, but yeah. Wait, and this is, that's sideways. This is the way it goes, okay, like that. It's cute. Yeah, and so Louise, I had some fabric here. I just brought it and they, the, the piece of foam that they used for that cushion looks like it was cut with a butter knife. Ooh, African print, denim and camel. That sounds amazing. Yay, let's try it the other way. Let me see my stitching, I forgot to look. Look at that, none of it landed. Oh, there's a little bit, it landed right here on my band. Oh, can you see that? See there, that's the stitch that I just did, right? Top stitching the band to the brim. Some of it caught the band, some of it didn't. But it doesn't look bad. Like I would still wear this like this. It hits my glasses. <laughs> you need something for grievance. <laughs> oh yeah, Helen. I think I'm gonna make one out of, um, maybe that's what I'll do. I was gonna make one out of um, waxed canvas, but maybe I could make one with waxed canvas and like a wool lining. So it would be warm and water repellent. But I kind of was like, ooh, I, I have Gore-Tex. I actually have some Gore-Tex. And if I got a new thing of seam grip, which is like a tube of um, water sealing for fabric on the things like Gore-Tex, I could make it waterproof. Yeah, add a pin. You Oh, you could actually do a little like you know, decorative thing. Oh, I saw one, I forgot to show you guys in the Instagram hashtag that one person did like three holes, you know, like the little stitched holes like you see on these hats. Um, so their machine must do that. My machine does do a circle like that on a buttonhole. Like it does two different kinds of buttonholes, so I could probably fake it. Yeah, that was pretty good. What time is it, 12.30? Oh. I kind of want to do another one, but I really do need to keep going on these bin bins. I hope you guys show me your hats. Oh, there's threads in my hair. Yeah, my other one is right here. And I was going to, and, you know, I thought about this later on. Like, what do you guys think? Would I still stitch this brim? Yeah, oil cloth would be interesting. The only problem with oil cloth is um, well, it, it's sticky. Like it, it would make your machine drag. So you're gonna have to be careful with that. Uh, you can't really waterproof it, but I think you could do uh, like a water resistant, right? You can make stitched eyelets, Barbara. Nice. Yeah, and that and that actually gives some venting, right? Yeah. I just like umbrellas too, Adina. Uh, ripstop, yeah, you could use ripstop. Ripstop's very, very, very lightweight though. I would use something like a lightweight Cordura, like something like a three to 500 denier Cordura, or um, if they have a, a heavier weight kind of a ripstop. What do you mean, wait, the oil cloth, 
See now, oil cloth here in the States is this super colorful kind of, um, don't I have any of it around? It's like plastic. I always wondered why it was called that. With ear flaps, that'd be cute. Yeah, Ursula, good point. It won't be. So if you want it to be uh, waterproof, you would have to skip your top stitching or you use the seam grip, which is like this, it's like a tube. It's like a, it's like a glue for lack of a better word. Yeah, you can use a Teflon foot to sew or put a piece of tape underneath or just, yeah, just make sure you're not touching the right side of it. It'll be less draggy. But um, what you could do is if you really want this look, you could do this top stitching to your only your outer brim, not your inner brim. And then as long as you um, are still seam gripping, like, ooh, it'd be really hard to make it waterproof. When you use wax cotton, can't you use the, uh, get an extra bar of the wax and then seal it? I don't know about sealing all these lines. That might be a little ambitious for that wax. Yeah, exactly. It is, but the th as soon as you put a hole in it, it's not waterproof anymore. I can talk to you for days about waterproofing. I worked at a, I worked at a, like one of the, well, actually the top manufacturer of um, water sports wear for kayakers. We also did military contracts. And um, it was really interesting. Like we were the only American factory that was certified to sew every type of Gore-Tex fabric, which is really rare to be able to be certified to sew all of their fabrics. This was, this was, I don't know if they still are. I'm sure they are, but, um, and, um, you had to, you, the only way you were allowed to sew and sell things in their fabric is you have to send it to their lab. You, you don't get to go, <laughs> but your garment goes into this testing process that's pretty crazy and um then they either pass it or not and so you wait you wait a long time to learn if your garment passes and if it doesn't pass you cannot market the garment you have to go back to engineering which was me and fix it um we only had something fail i think one time it was kind of interesting but that's why i've talked about doing like pockets that self bail so like say you're in your kayak you go over and your pockets fill up with water it could weight you down and drown the person. So we did self bailing pockets and things like that. It was really fascinating. It's why I'm such a weirdo, uh, not weirdo, but why I talk about masks with the seam down here. I'm like, but everything can get through that seam. Like I've seen how much water can get through one needle hole and it's kind of amazing. Yeah, the tape, like you can get some of those iron on tapes, fusible thread. Fusible thread though, doesn't that, Fusible thread, that whole, those two words together are making my head kind of spin. Like a glue thread? Yeah, that's it, that's it, Penny. You can get seam tape, but the seam tape, honestly, isn't, your iron can't go high enough. Most home irons can't go high enough to set that seam tape. They use these machines, they're amazing. And it like literally, kind of looks like a binding machine, but it's a tape and it glues, it welds it. It actually heat, heats it, irons it to the garment. That's a whole fascinating thing. So you actually have to design the garment to be able to be seam taped. So can you, you know how we whine about like French seams in a, in a underarm or, or a armhole? You, you wanna have someone give you what's what. You talk to someone who sits at a seam tape machine and they have to tape every seam on the jacket. <laughs> they really hold you, hold your feet to the fire. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, doesn't a fusible thread wash away? Yeah. Yeah, oil, our oil cloth is different. Let me show you. Cause it's, it's not really a great thing. I have tons of it.
it's got kind of like a vintage vibe. Yeah, this is this is what they call oil cloth here. It smells like plastic. Oh, they wash away as a different version. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Fusible threads, plastic with melts and fat. Oh, that's interesting. This is oil cloth here. It was really popular for a while. Bag makers were using it. Um, I use it as a tablecloth, or I put it under my cutting mats, so it's pretty <laughs> because they're kind of clear. Um, so if you guys are really interested in waterproof stuff, that's something I should do some stuff. I should totally do some stuff like that this winter. I need to find a good raincoat pattern. There's a few out there. I've made one. But um, check out sites like The Rain Shed or Seattle Fabrics because they specialize in stuff like that, like outdoor stuff. I haven't looked lately, so I don't know what they have there. But um, that's, that's kind of, you need that kind of good information for that stuff. You're kind of limited to what's available. So I would get everything you need for your project. So, okay, if you're using this fabric that takes a seam tape, then you get the fabric and the seam tape, right? If you're gonna use something that's got a seam, the seam grip, which is like a, the tube of glue, you use that. Um, or if you use this fusible thread you're talking about, you use the right fabric with that. Cause it's usually like that. Like it's like, they go together. Yeah, right. I think that's called um, oil skin here. It's called oil skin here. Yeah. The closet core um, Kelly coat. That's a mouthful. Yeah, Helen, I think that's called oil skin here. Not easy to find. Wax cotton can. This is like our closest thing. What would you would love a raincoat thing type of Louise? I wouldn't mind that either. I don't have one. Yeah, because it would be fun. I haven't done it in a while. I can maybe even ask them to... Kokatat is where I worked. I could ask them for some stuff. They're pretty nice to me, for the most part. <laughs> um, I don't have much left. But, you know, it's like I made a raincoat before I worked there. That was the last time I made one. I mean, I, like I sewed it myself. I made things there, but it was different. I would just do, like, little bits here and there. Anyway... This turned out so good. This is actually one of my better sewing projects. I think. Oh, Merchant Mill sells it over there. All right, that's good to know. Yeah, oil skin. Oh, really? I haven't made... Wait, didn't I do a Tilly in the Buttons? Oh, I did kids clothes. What were those called? Her like, little offshoot. Yeah, I think I'm ready. I wonder if I would do, I think I would do a slightly bigger one, but I would make the band shorter. Yeah, so, um, well, Melinda, I might be able to help with that. Like if you, I don't know about overseas though. Yeah, let's start brainstorming that. I have a lot of experience with outerwear. I really love sewing it. It's just like, I feel like the, the, I just don't do it a lot. And it's because you don't need very many raincoats. You don't need very many outdoor things. And a lot of what we did was so specific to the sport. So, but I, I love that kind of sewing. I love that technical stuff. Um, and those green pepper patterns, they are still kicking around. Those are pretty solid patterns. Like they have rain pants and a raincoat. Oh yeah, the Tilly Cleo. Yeah. Yeah, all the all the Brits are like, yeah, raincoat. <laughs> but I could use one here. Mine um delaminated, which means that the fabric failed. So Okay, well that was awesome, you guys. I'm gonna get back to it with the bin bin. Um so I'm hoping that pattern is available because I'd really like you guys to be able to have it this coming week when I go to sew them. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it because the patterns can be very cheap. I'm probably gonna make it about six bucks um, cause I really want it to be like, it just everyone be able to have it. 
and um, and I'm because it's going to be affordable that way. I'm not doing really detailed sewing instructions in it, but I'll hopefully I'm going to do I'm going to do a couple streams, and I think I might add a dedicated video that's a little more condensed than a stream would be. You know, so. Yeah, right, Helen. Are you shipping overseas? Sh shipping far? She's not in the states. Melon, you're in um, Sweden. I'm forgetting. Yeah, it is Louise. That's good. It's not wedding out because mine's wedding out. And my husband bought it for me as a gift, and he felt so bad. But I got a few years out of it. But you know, I should have gotten more. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so I'll see you guys on Thursday again. And we'll sew some bin bins. I'm gonna be making some samples today. I'm glad you guys are excited about it. I'm really into it. I'm having so much fun with it. But I really want it to be something like once you do, you're like, ooh, this is kind of fun. You know, like I get, I just need to find my A, my B, my C, and then I put the number A in all the A slots and the B in the B slots, C in the B, C slots, and then I have my pattern piece, you know? So, cool. All right. Thanks for the two bucks, uh, Nancy, for <laughs> me winning Bob and Roulette. <laughs> Hope I don't have to play that game again anytime soon. <laughs> meter, meter. Oh, that's a cute, that's a cute name. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, you guys too. Yeah, this was fun. This hat was really fun. I should probably make another one, but I really want to get to that pattern. So, all right. Thanks for coming. Um, you can support me on Patreon. Um, I Yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. You're gonna making the Michael? Good. Cool. I pre-washed my fabric. It turned out great. Um, if you're looking for links to videos, you can't find part two or part one or the cutting video or something. Um, I have them all grouped on my website and my daughter has now linked all videos in every video. So it'll just take you to my website and then you can find the one you want and then it'll, you can go right back to YouTube. So yeah. And then, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, whatever. I have a couple patterns for sale. Yeah. Hit the like button. Thanks. <laughs> I'll see you guys really soon. Have a great weekend. Happy sewing. And if you guys make a hat, let me know. I want to see it. Okay. Cool. Bye guys.